Hello and welcome back to our decomp tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about the basics of inserting moves into the game, new moves. Now this is a bit of a complicated topic because the implementation of your move is entirely dependent on what you're trying to create in the game and they can range from extremely simple you know, it takes five minutes to add the move, uh, which is what we're going to do today, or uh, very complicated, it's going to take you hours and hours of debugging because nothing you're doing is working. And we'll try to cover a little bit of that in the next video. Um, but for now, we are going to talk about just the basics of inserting basically a new version of an old move in the game. There are plenty of these throughout the series, so we are going to be implementing Aqua Tail, which is just a plain damaging water move. Uh, there's nothing special about it, so it's very easy um, to add into the game. And any move that um, uses the same effect uh, as another move that's just a different type or has a different power or accuracy, um, any move like that is going to be very, very easy to add into the game. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover in this video. Um, so to start with, when you are adding a new move, um, you have to create a define for it. This is just a number that all of the code is going to uh, use uh, to index out our move when it's accessing it from an array um, for you know the descriptions. Uh, it tells it where in the description array, where in the name array, where in the move effect array, all of our data is. So we just go to include constants moves.h, add a new move define, and then increase moves count to be one higher. Now after we do that, we are going to go into source data battle moves.h and we are going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. This is the main battle moves struct array, array of structs that contains all of the uh, important information about our moves. Um, <clears throat> so this is where we're actually creating the move itself. We are just going to copy um, the, you know, any move paste it so that we can edit the data um, and we are going to start by changing the effect um, to effect hit uh, because that's the effect that we want. Um, there are a lot of different move effects that are um, in the game by default. Um, so here is the list of move effects and include constants battle move effects.h. You can see all of these move effects you can choose from for your vanilla moves. Using one of these move effects is very, makes, you know, it's very simple. It's not going to take you long to add a copy of one of those moves, um, but we will get into adding new move effects in the next video. Um, a lot of these are very obvious. Power type, accuracy, PP, you just change them to what you want them to be. Secondary effect chance, this has to do with things like flinching. If your move effect has a flinch, uh, we can go to a flinch move. Um, the secondary event, uh, effect chance here is 30% uh, for this to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go to a different one. Do, do, do. Yeah, this one is 10%. Hyperfang has a 10% flitch hit uh, chance. Anyway, um, you might need to set that for your move, but our move is just a simple damaging move. Aqua Tail does not do anything special. Um, next is the target. Now, the target uh, is a little um, more complicated. So here in include battle.h, um, we have our list of targets that we can access. Um, move target selected, this is just your choosing which mon you want to attack. Uh, move target depends, I don't really remember what that one is. Um, move target user or selected, uh, it's, it's the same thing, uh, just you can also choose yourself. Move target random, it randomly hits someone. Move target both in a double battle, it chooses both people. Uh, move target user, it chooses yourself. Uh, move target foes and ally, it's like earthquake where it hits everyone. Um, move target opponent field, it only hits the opponent's field. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I might have messed one of those up, like move target both. I don't add that many moves, so uh, you might need to do some testing. Um, priority, this is the speed. Um, we can look at the priority uh, of some other moves that have different speeds. Um, to see quick attack is a priority of one, that just means it comes out faster. Um, 
extreme speed um, has a priority of one that just means it comes out faster. Um, so a move with a higher priority will come out faster than a move with a lower priority. In the, in the vanilla, uh, the priorities only go up to one. If you are working on the expansion, a lot of this uh, data is different. Actually, I'm going to um, pull over the expansion and we can look at, um, so the expansion has an extra Z move effect thing. Um, and we have more, if we go to extreme speed, extreme speed, extreme speed has, where is the priority party? It has a priority of two. So if we have data that's higher than gen five, it gets a priority of two because there's more complicated, uh, logic for the expansion. Um, so it uses, <coughs> more levels of priority um, so you have to be aware of that and the expansion has other things uh, as well like the Z moves it has more move effects um, by default that you can add it has a ton of move effects um, it has more uh, more flags that I haven't talked about yet um, that uh, change some of the things that are uh, um, some of the ways that your move interacts with other things in the game um, like abilities so we can look at these battle flags real quick. Here are the battle flags. Flags make contact, protect affected, magic code affected, snatch affected, mirror move affected, king's rock affected. It's basically what it says there. Uh, so the moves are just affected by these things. If you want your move to go through protect, you do not include the protect affected flag. Uh, and the same with magic coat, snatch, mirror move, king's rock. Are these moves affected by these other things? If you want them to be, then you include these battle flags. The expansion has more, like it has like stuff for like slicing moves because there's some abilities or something in the late gens that boost slicing moves or something. I don't know. I, I haven't played them. But anyway, um, so here we have gone through all of the, um, the, data sections of our move strict um, so we can move on to the next thing uh, which is adding a name so we're just going to go to source data text moves dot name uh, move names dot h sorry uh, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom we're going to copy the entry and just change it uh, use our move define give it a name simple as that move description source data text move descriptions dot h move do the same thing copy it uh add a new one but here we're actually going to have to scroll back up a bit and we are going to need to uh copy one of these and let's see i actually haven't uh, changed the oh no i did i pulled it straight from the expansion so it already has the uh the text for the description um so just copy a string and give it your description. Next, you don't have to do right away, but we obviously need a Pokemon to be able to learn the move or uh, have it in the TM, uh, the TM learn set. So here's the uh, level up learn sets and the TM learn sets that age are both in source data Pokemon. Um, and I just added it to Mudkip. So our Mudkip starter would have it uh, right off the bat. Um, and then the last thing we need to do, so we have, uh, we have done all but one thing uh, for this move to work. Uh, already, most of the time I have spent is rambling. We haven't even been actually um, programming. It is a move animation. Now, because this is a brief tutorial of how to add a basic move, I am not going to get into the complicated battle script animation uh, system, and I haven't even messed with it much at all. I've added a lot of moves, porting them from the expansion into Pokefire Red, but I have not uh, added any of the animations for them. I haven't ported the animation, so I don't know much about how the animations work other than being able to generally read what these uh, commands are doing and copy them and look at the function using VS Code's search function. So anyway, we are going to the bottom of this moves of this move animation uh, data table, whatever you want to call it, uh, a struct that it gets turned into or something, I don't know. Um, and <clears throat> we are just going to add a new entry um so this is in the, these are in order by the um 
by the defines here so you want to have it exact this cannot be out of order if you put your move after psycho boost then it needs to be after psycho boost um you don't need to change move count it should uh change on its own um it should already be that way from your define so then we just need to add a move now uh and, and it just has to have a, a move animation script and it just has to have this identifier that we put up here um, as the name of it um, and I recommend early on uh, you just copy a move uh, animation from a different move here I copied half of whirlpool and half of iron tail but I took out the hardening and like iron part of it which basically is just like a tackle so I should have just copied tackle but it doesn't matter this first part I literally just I copied this up to here and then I pasted it up to wherever that is here. Uh, and then I copied Iron Tail up to here and then just added the end. Uh, and those were just the two sections of that. And it actually looks kind of okay. Um, maybe I'll get into a move animation tutorial video after I look into how it works more. Um, but it's in... not today. <laughs> Uh, so this is all done. We have added everything that we needed. We added a define, we added uh, our move struct, we added a name, we added a description, we gave it to a Pokemon so that we can see it in game, and we added an animation. Um, so we can compile, but I already have, um, and we are going to go into battle. We have our move Aquatail. Mudkip used Aquatail. Whirlpool effect, tackle. And it's a 90 base power move or whatever it was, so it instantly kills our Zigzagoon, uh, and we win the battle. Um, pretty simple. So that is basic moves being added into the game. Um, we will get into adding more complicated move effects in the next video, um, but I definitely recommend trying to uh, either, if you have already... Uh, either use an effect from vanilla or if you're not using the expansion or are using the expansion you find a, an expansion move effect uh, and use that or copy that into vanilla which we will be doing to illustrate how to create a move effect in the next uh, video uh, on creating moves uh, we will be copying a more complicated move effect and move from a later gen game from the expansion into this vanilla copy of Poké Emerald to show how that process works um, so I will see you on the next video. If you have any comments or questions, uh, make sure to leave them down below or in the Discord, preferably if they're complicated. Uh, see you later.